Father's love everyone and welcome. This week we're going to read John chapter 6. So sit back and relax. Let's see what the Spirit can teach us this week. After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they beheld the signs which he did on them that were sick. And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Jesus therefore lifting up his eyes, and seeing that a great multitude cometh unto him, saith unto Philip, Whence are we to buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred shillings worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There's a lad here, who hath five barley loaves and two fishes, but what are these among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. Jesus therefore took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to them that were set down, likewise also of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, he saith unto his disciples, Gather up the broken pieces which remain over, that nothing be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with broken pieces from the five barley loaves which remained over unto them that had eaten. When therefore the people saw the sign which he did, they said, This is of a truth the prophet that cometh into the world. Jesus therefore perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again into the mountain himself alone. And when evening came, his disciples went down unto the sea, and they entered into a boat, and were going over the sea unto Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. And the sea was rising, by reason of a great wind that blew. When therefore they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they behold Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the boat, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, it is I, be not afraid. They were willing therefore to receive him into the boat, and straight away the boat was at the land whither they were going. On the morrow, the multitude that stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there save one, and that Jesus entered not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples went away alone. Howbeit there came boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they ate the bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the multitude therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw signs, but because ye ate of the loaves and were filled. Work not for the food which perisheth, but for the food which abideth unto eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him the Father, even God, hath sealed. They said therefore unto him, what must we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. They said therefore unto him, What then doubtest thou for a sign that we may see and believe thee? What workest thou? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. 
Jesus therefore said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, It was not Moses that gave you the bread out of heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which cometh down out of heaven and giveth life unto the world. They said therefore unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall not hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye have seen me, and yet believe not. All that which the Father giveth me shall come unto me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I am come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the will of him that sent me, that of all that which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that every one that beholdeth the Son, and believeth on him, should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews therefore murmured concerning him, because he said, I am the bread which came down out of heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How doth he now say, I am come down out of heaven? Jesus answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me, except the Father that sent me draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every one that hath heard from the Father, and hath learned, cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he that is from God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth hath eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which cometh down out of heaven, that a man may eat thereof, and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Yea, and the bread which I will give is my flesh, for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove one with another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus therefore saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have not life in yourselves. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, abideth in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he that eateth me, he also shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured at this, said unto them, Doth this cause you to stumble? What then if ye should behold the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I have spoken unto you are spirit, and are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who it was that should betray him. 
And he said, For this cause have I said unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it be given unto him of the Father. Upon this many of his disciples went back, and walked no more with him. Jesus said therefore unto the twelve, Would you also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we have believed and know that thou art the Holy One of God. Jesus answered, Did not I choose you, the twelve? And one of you is a devil. Now he spoke of Judas, the son of Simon, Iscariot, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. I hope that blesses each and every one of you who listened to it. Let's do us a review. Chapter 6 picks up Jesus' going away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. <clears throat> and it says a great multitude follows him because they've seen all the signs he did on them that were sick. Remember we just read in the earlier chapters about the man at the pool of Bethesda who he healed and the uh, nobleman's son I believe it was whom he healed and the crowds had seen him doing these healings and healing the sick so they were intrigued and following him <clears throat> it says Jesus goes up into the mountain with his disciples and Passover was at hand the feast of the Jews so Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing the great multitude that was coming unto him said to Philip where are we going to get bread to feed all these people now it says he said this to test Philip because he already knew what he was going to do so you got to remember there's a whole crowd of people following him now because they've seen the miracles he performed well the apostles Philip the rest of them also seen the miracles he performed and more than they seen so he's going to test him a little bit here and he says where are we going to get enough bread to feed these people so Philip answers in a normal worldly way so we would take 200 shillings to feed these people and that wouldn't even be enough that would only be enough for him to get a little bit but one of his disciples Andrew Simon's Peter's brother said unto him there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fishes but uh, what are these going to do among so many people? So, when Jesus asked, what are we going to do, testing them, Philip gave a pretty much a worldly type answer. Well, we, ain't, it, we don't have enough money to buy bread for these people. Not even close. But Andrew, I think, possibly, my opinion, had a little more hope. He said, well, hey, we got five barley loaves and two fishes. But, you know, that's not much for a lot of people. But he sort of gave them an option, sort of had, I think, a little bit of hope. So Jesus said, well, tell the people to sit down. And it says there's lots of grass, so the men sat down, about 5,000. Now, remember back in the day, it says there were 5,000 men. So that's not counting the women and children. I'm sure there were some of them there, too. And it says... Then Jesus took the loaves, and giving thanks for them, he distributed them to everyone that was sitting down, and did the same thing with the fishes. And they took as much as they wanted to eat, and were filled up. And then he told the disciples to gather up the broken pieces, which remain over, so that nothing can be lost. And it said when they gathered up the broken pieces left over from the five loaves, they filled 12 baskets so basically now Jesus performs another major miracle in front of the people takes a little offering of five barley loaves and two fishes and feeds well over 5,000 people to fill till they were totally full and gathered up 12 basketfuls of leftovers it says when the people saw this sign they said this is definitely the prophet that comes into the world 
Now Jesus knew that they were about to come and take him and make him the king. So he withdrew into the mountain alone. See, Jesus didn't want anything to do with being their worldly king this moment in time. So when the people he knew, says he perceived, he knew in their heart that because of this miracle he just did, they were like, oh, this this got to be our king. So he sneaks off into the mountain alone. In my opinion, of course, to pray and fellowship with the Father. And it says, when evening came, his disciples went down, got into the boat, and headed back over towards Capernaum. And it was dark, and Jesus hadn't come to him yet. And the sea was rising because of a great wind. And it says they rode about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, and then they seen Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh to the boat, and it says they were afraid. Now here's these disciples, seen him do all these miracles, <laughs> been walking with him a little while now, and when they see him walking on the water, they're afraid. So he told him, it's me, don't be scared, don't be afraid, it's all right, it's just me. And it says, then they were willing to receive him into the boat. And when he got in the boat, it says straight away, the boat was on the other side, at the land where they were going. Interesting verse, when we look at it. It says, as soon as they left him in the boat, the boat was where it was going. Almost like it teleported, basically. Interesting, to say the least. And then we see, the next day, the multitude gets up. They're looking around, and they realize the disciples are gone. Now, they knew Jesus didn't get in the boat with them, but they realize Jesus is gone, too. So they all hop in their boats and head over to Capernaum to see if they can find Jesus. And when they find him, they said, Well, how'd you get over here? Well, whether they answered him, Jesus says, He starts teaching them a lesson. Which I believe is what he had in mind all along. And teaching his apostles a lesson at the same time. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The only reason you're looking for me, basically, Is because, Not because you've seen the miracles I did, but because you got your fill of food. Don't work for the food that perishes, but for food which lives, which abides to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, because the Father has sealed him. So he's basically calling him out. I think like a lot of quote-unquote Christians nowadays, need to look at this verse right here this little verses 26 and 27 because see he's telling him you're not seeking me for spiritual reasons you're seeking me for worldly reasons you're seeking me because your belly was full you're after the worldly treasure things I can do to make your life easier You're not seeking spiritual things. That's basically what Jesus is saying here. Why do you follow Jesus? See, they're following him. They're chasing him all over the place. Why are you following him? Are you following him for that prosperity gospel? Are you following him because you think you can use him like a slot machine and only come to him when you need something worldly just things to ask ourselves on our journey so they say unto him well what what do we got to do that we can do the works of God <clears throat> so Jesus answers and tell him well if you want to do the work of God believe the one he sent be a good place to start if I want to do the work of the Father, maybe I ought to believe and listen to the guy the Father sent. 
So then they say to him, now remember, these are the people that just got fed off of five loaves of bread and two fish. They already seen him healing people, miraculously. So when he tells them to believe on the one he sent, they say to him, well, what kind of sign are you going to show us so we can see and believe? What works are you going to do? Because our fathers ate man in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. So these people had just seen all this stuff, <laughs> all these miraculous signs, ask him what he's going to do to prove what he's saying is true. Because their fathers got manna in the wilderness. I, those verses just blow my mind. I, I don't think I could have had the gumption to ask him what sign are you going to do after I had just seen him do all these signs. Mind blowing. So Jesus says to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, it wasn't Moses that gave you the bread out of heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. So he says, you want a sign like Moses had of manna? Moses didn't give you that bread out of heaven. That was my Father. And now he's giving you the true bread out of heaven that comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. So they say to him, Oh yeah, well, we want that bread. Give us that bread. So Jesus says to him, I am the bread of life. If you come to me, you'll never hunger. And if you believe on me, you'll never thirst. But I said to you, and you've seen me, and yet you believe not. In other words, I've already showed you all kind of signs. I've told you all kind of things. I've said it to you. You've seen me do it, and you still don't believe. Then he says, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And when they come to me, I'll in no wise cast them out. For I'm come down out of heaven, not to do my will, but the will of the Father that sent me. And the will of the Father that sent me is that out of all that he's given me, I should lose nothing, but raise it up at the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone that beholds the Son and believes on him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So you see, although these people were following Jesus and seeking after him, they were doing it for carnal reasons, not spiritual reasons. They were doing it so they wouldn't be hungry in a worldly way, wouldn't be thirsty in a worldly way. They couldn't comprehend what he's saying that they'll never hunger again if they come to him and they'll never thirst again if they come to him because he's talking about the hunger and the thirst that we have for the spiritual not the carnal and the ones the father gives him well, we understand that we hunger and thirst for the spiritual things we don't worry about the carnal things father knows our needs Father always provides. He has never let me down. And I guarantee he will never let you down. You will always have what you need carnally to eat and drink. You better seek for what you can eat and drink so that you never hunger and thirst again. He will raise you up in the last day if we truly follow him. 
And when he said this, the Jews didn't like it. Because he said he was the bread that came down of heaven. And they said, isn't this Jesus? We know his mother and father. How's he going to say he came down out of heaven? Jesus answered and said unto him, again showing the fact that I'm sure they were murmuring so that Jesus couldn't hear them, you know, in their little corner whispering amongst themselves. But Jesus knew what they were murmuring. He says, don't murmur among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father that sent me draws him, and I will raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone that hath heard from the Father, and hath learned, comes unto me. So again he's saying, No one's going to come unto me that's seeking these worldly things. But if the Father sends them to me, they're seeking the spiritual things. It's written in the prophets they'll all be taught of God then he says not that any man has seen the Father save he that's from God he's seen the Father I find that interesting this is a verse that you should take yourself to the Spirit and ask it to reveal more to you from verse 46. It's a lot of hidden stuff in that little verse. Because he's saying right there, no one, no man has ever seen the Father other than himself, basically. Interesting. Then he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes has eternal life, because I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness and died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven, that a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of heaven. If any man eats this bread, he'll live forever. Yeah, and the bread which I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Jesus is telling them, yeah, your fathers ate the man in the wilderness. That sign you're looking for. Oh, that, yeah, they ate that. They died. I'm the bread that comes down. When you eat this bread, you're never going to die. And now I think he starts to try to separate the called from the ones that are just following for the worldly things because he says the bread which I'll give is my flesh for the life of the world so immediately the Jews strove one another saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat see he's talking spiritual they're thinking worldly he's separating the uh, sort of wheat and tear, shall we say. They have no clue what he's talking about. Because they're worldly. Although they think they're quite the spiritual group. So Jesus says to them, I'm telling you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves the ones that eat my flesh and drink my blood have the eternal life and those are the ones I'll raise up at the last day because my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed so if you eat my flesh and drink my blood you abideth in me and I abide in you and the father that sent me and I live because of the father so he that eateth me, he also shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven, not as your fathers ate and died. 
but the ones that eat this bread will live forever. So now he's just taking it to a whole new level on them. They are totally lost at what he's saying. Oh, they think they know their scriptures. They think they know all about the Father. But they have no clue about spiritual things because they're too worldly. So they have totally no understanding that he's talking about the future sacrifice that he's going to give for them. He's going to give his body and his blood. And it's going to give us eternal life. Because we eat that flesh, that nature of Jesus. We try to become more like Jesus. We eat his flesh, his ways. We consume his blood for our atonement. We accept his sacrifice with thanksgiving. We understand what he's saying. He says he said these things in the synagogue in Capernaum. And it says also that many therefore of his disciples. See there was more than just the twelve disciples. There was many many disciples. Remember at one point. In one of the other gospels I believe Matthew. It says about he sent the disciples out two by two. And there was like 70 some or something. So we know there was more than 12 starting out. And like I said, I think this is the point where he decides it's time to start separating the worldly from the spiritual. So many of them when they heard this was like, well, this is too hard. We can't even, can't even hear this. This makes no sense. This basically is, this is too hard a saying. We don't get it. Forget it. We're out. They left. We're done. See, they were seeking him for the worldly stuff. As long as he's feeding them and healing them. Oh, yeah, they're following. Moment it gets a little tough. Well, now. We don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to hear the tough stuff. Oh, he wants the easy stuff. How can you bless us? We don't want to know how you can correct us. Oh, we need a lot of correcting. But Jesus, knowing again that these disciples were murmuring, tells them. So again, Jesus knows what they're thinking in their heart. Jesus knows what they're murmuring among themselves. He says, is this causing you to stumble? Don't you understand? Is this causing you to stumble? Well, what are you going to do then when you see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? You can't handle this. You're never going to handle that. It's the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is nothing. The words I've spoken are Spirit and life. But there's some of you that don't believe. See, it's what he's saying. I'm not talking about the flesh. That profits nothing. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking the spirit. But you don't believe it. You don't get it. Too wrapped up in the world. You can't even begin to comprehend the spirit. Because Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that wasn't going to believe. And he also knew who it was that was going to betray him. And he says, For this cause I said unto you that no man can come unto me except to be given unto him of the Father. He said, That's why I told you. 
Oh, you weren't seeking me for worldly things. You weren't given to me by the Father. You don't know the Father. You can't even begin to comprehend the spiritual. And then it says upon this, many of his disciples, many, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Imagine that. There they were walking with Jesus. And one little saying that was too hard for them to understand because they were too carnal caused them to turn their back on him and walk with him no more. Oh, I pray that never happens to you, brothers and sisters. Because you see, when something's too hard to understand, well, that's when we need to take it to the Spirit and pray for a revelation. And he'll get one. Don't just turn your back on him and walk away. Because he said something that you might not be comfortable with. So then he looks at the twelve. This is one of my favorite passages in scripture. When times get tough for me, I always think of these, this passage right here, verses 67 and 68. He looks at the twelve and he says, are you leaving too? Is it too tough for you? Is what you're going through too hard to handle? Is this word too hard to understand? You out of here too. And I'm always reminded of Simon Peter answering him. Lord, where else could we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Oh, every time it starts getting a little rough on me, and it does, the enemy's relentless. <laughs> He's relentless. Then I just think of when Jesus looking at me saying, are you leaving too? And I look at him and I say, no, where else would I go? Where else would I go? Don't forget to pray for the children out there and our fellow brothers and sisters all around the world. And for those still stumbling in that darkness so that they too can come to the light. And don't forget to take that time and get alone somewhere quiet and fellowship with the Father, Son, and Spirit. Take your questions to them. Take your worries to them. Take your burdens to them. Take it all to them. Because they're the words of eternal life. Where else would I go? How could I ever turn away? I know that you're the Son of God. I'll see you next time.